It wasn't long ago that this is what was needed to add two terabytes of storage to your PC. But just as quickly as magnetic or spinning rust drives gave way to the solid state drive first generations, we saw the emergence of NVMe as a much faster replacement for the SATA drives of days past. Over time, we saw a rapid rise in drive capacities, cell density, and clever optimization algorithms by clever controller manufacturers like Marvell, Luther Corp, and Fizen. Actually, one of those might have been in Batman. But specifically, Fizen deployed the first widespread controller for PCIe Gen 4 NVMe drives when they first hit the scene alongside Ryzen 3000 in 2019. Even though a number of manufacturers made Gen 4 drives like Seagate, Corsair, Gigabyte, they were all using the Fizen E16 controller because it was really the only game in town, but that more or less made all the drives perform about the same, maxing out at about five gigabytes per second. And already at those speeds, that's, That's a, a lot, lot of, of damage. damage. But how about a little more? Now, in 2021, Fizen is back with their E18 controller, which is capable of an even faster 7.4 gigabytes per second. And one of the first manufacturers to take advantage of this new controller is Sabrent with their Rocket 4 Plus series. It's a sequel to the Rocket 4 series, which used the aforementioned previous gen Fizen E16 controller. So today we are looking at these drives the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus Gen 4 NVMe drive in one, two, and four terabyte capacities to see how they stack up against each other and actually against a few previous gen drives in a few different workloads, including gaming. And if you're still on PCIe Gen 3, are you being left behind? So try it before you knock it. Today's topic includes the Sabrent Rocket, if it belongs in your socket or if you should block it. So join our docket, and I'll walk it like I talk it. Walk it, walk it like I talk it. Hey. So these are the drives, and if we zoom in here to some B-roll, you can see that they have a little sticker on the front. Now that sticker is not just for decorations. These stickers are actually made of copper and they're used basically as heat spreaders to increase the surface area that the drive has to cool itself. NVMe drives get pretty warm and you generally wanna use some form of an additional heat sink or maybe even active cooling to help remove the heat from the controller of the module. Now, most manufacturers make heat sinks for their drives. In fact, some drives even ship with them but there are also less expensive and equally effective third-party options like this one here that I picked up from Amazon for $12. And uh, some motherboards even ship with heat spreaders covering the onboard NVMe slots. You see, unlike me in high school, these drives have a need to be cool. Now, I wanna show you the board layout of these drives, but since these particular units are gonna go inside my personal PC, I really don't wanna remove the copper heat spreaders because when you try to put them back on, they're never quite as even ever again after you take them off. So instead, let's do sort of a CGI X-ray vision thing <laughs> on the one terabyte unit. Here at the top, we've got the Fizen E18 controller, then an eight gigabyte SK Hynix DDR4 2666 megahertz DRAM cache, followed by four modules of 256 gigabytes of Micron B27B TLC NAND flash memory to add up to your total of one terabyte. The two terabyte units have the same layout, but the back has an additional eight gig DRAM cache module and four more 256 gigabyte modules. Then the four terabyte unit has the same layout as the two terabyte unit, except each NAND module, instead of being 256 gigs, it's 512. One of the things I love about these drives is they're using TLC flash. Most high capacity NVMe drives today use QLC to save a little bit of money. TLC or triple layer cell flash puts three bits of data into a single flash cell while QLC or quad layer cell flash crams an additional bit for a total of four bits per cell. Now that means that both the speed and endurance of QLC is lower than TLC because as data on the drive is moved around, changed or deleted, the cells need to be rewritten more often. And we all know the thing that we all really want rewritten is season eight of Game of Thrones. Too soon? Too soon. 
But as a matter of practicality, the extra rewrites don't become too much of a problem until the drive starts filling up because all these drives operate in SLC cache mode for as long as they can. They only write a single bit to a cell while there's still ample space to do that. Now, eventually the controller has to start consolidating multiple bits to a cell in order for the drive to hit its listed capacity. Now, that's one of the reasons that more advanced controllers are so key to an SSD's speed and longevity. And these Rocket 4 Plus drives do indeed have a state-of-the-art controller, the shiny new Fizen E18. It's actually fabricated by TSMC, who really are at the top of their fab game right now on their 12 nanometer process node. It's got five cores, two of which are custom Fizen processors, and the other three are Cortex R5s, those are ARM processors. Those are actually used in a lot of drive controllers these days. They're uh, pretty well battle tested because they came out way back in 2011. Three cores of them is also pretty, pretty, uh, pretty, pretty, pretty good. Uh, it's this controller and the firmware that manages the distribution, encoding, and decoding of all the data onto the actual NAND, metadata caching on the DRAM, and the wear leveling and retiring of NAND cells as they lose their ability to hold a charge over time. Actually, kind of like my credit card, can't hold any more charges after buying these things. As of filming, you can pick up the one terabyte Rocket 4 Plus for about 200 bucks US. The two terabyte is about $400 and the four terabyte is about $800. Now that actually makes the larger capacities a better value because price per capacity on NVMe drives rarely scales linearly. Usually you pay more for the bigger ones, ladies. No word as of now if Sabrent is planning an eight terabyte version of this drive, but they do offer an eight terabyte Gen 3 drive. So let's get to the benchmarks. Now I performed a mix of tests ranging from synthetics to practical tests and things that you might actually encounter using a drive in the real world. You should keep in mind though, that SSD tests have an inherent flaw in that we generally test drives brand new. As drives age and fill up, results can change drastically. So the results you're about to see represent how the drive performs right out of the box. So if you go out and buy one of these drives based on this review, you're likely gonna have similar results in the beginning, but after some use, your results will deviate from these. My test bench is a Ryzen 9 3900X on an ASUS Prime X570P motherboard, 32 gigs of DDR4 3200 megahertz Corsair Vengeance, and an ASUS NVIDIA RTX 3090 ROG Strix OC. My primary goal in these tests was to compare these drives against each other to see how the various capacities perform relatively. Then I also threw in a Gen 3 Samsung 970 Evo drive for comparison, and I was also able to borrow a two terabyte Corsair Force MP600 Gen 4 drive for an afternoon. Now, th this was one of the first Gen 4 drives to come out and it used the previous generation Fizen E16 controller. These use the E18. Now, I only had this Corsair drive for a few hours, so I couldn't perform the full suite of tests on it. I'm just grateful to have the data that I was able to collect in that time. Now, since I'm in an open air test bench, I did point a fan at each drive in order to have at least some airflow going on and keep these drives cool. So starting off with the synthetic benchmark, the Crystal Disk Mark 8, four terabyte Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus reached a max read speed of about 7,200 megabytes per second. That is of course with sequential data, but it does in fact meet the claims of Sabrent for this drive. With random reads, we see a much more realistic range of anywhere from 73 to 642 megabytes per second, depending on the queue depth and thread count. Writes topped out just short of 6,900 megabytes per second sequential and range between 244 and 330 megabytes per second for random. Now, interestingly enough, once we overlay temperatures on top of this graph, we see that the drive does in fact obey the laws of physics and it hits its highest temps during heavy write operations, peaking at 66 degrees Celsius. Now that's below the 70 degree hard-coded throttle point, but it comes pretty close, especially since I ran it directly under a fan. Now we'll look at the temperature comparisons in a moment here, but you'll definitely want some kind of cooling, especially for the four terabyte drive, since it doesn't have that heat spreader on the bottom. 
Let's skip directly to the comparison charts. Taking a look at the sequential read, 8Q depth, one thread chart, you can see that the four terabyte Rocket Plus is indeed the fastest of all the tested drives for both reads and writes in this test. The two terabyte is right behind it, although one interesting note is just how far behind the one terabyte falls in sequential write speeds. Now I'd take a, just a, a guess that this has something to do with the lower capacity having less cache available, but don't know for sure. Keep in mind, this test is somewhat unrealistic and represents a technical best case scenario for both reads and writes across all these drives. Now give special attention to last year's Corsair MP600 and how it dominates over the older PCIe Gen 3 Samsung drive in this particular test as we switch over to a Q depth of one. Now you can see the Gen 4 Corsair drive actually getting spanked by the Gen 3 Samsung in reads. In fact, the Samsung actually writes faster than the Corsair reads at this Q depth, which again, due to the sequential nature of this test, you're not likely to encounter this situation in many real world scenarios. Looking at the Rocket 4 Plus drives, they're approximately equal in read speed, but the four terabyte drive retains its dominance in write speed, followed by the two terabyte and finally the one terabyte. Looking at random 4K with a Q depth of 32, we see the Rocket 4 Plus line dominate on reads and get pummeled on writes versus the other drives. Even the third gen Samsung, which was actually hampered by thermal throttling in this test, despite again being directly under a fan. Note that the rocket's write speed are all within margin of error of each other, and that's because they're hitting a firmware limit, not a hardware limit. Getting beaten by the other drives in this test isn't necessarily because they're bad drives, it's just due to the way that the programmers of the controller anticipated their average customer's workloads. You see, most consumer workloads will never see Q depths this high. This would be more common in like a server scenario with a lot of database queries. And if that's you, there are SSDs out there that are more optimized for that type of enterprise workload and would probably be a better choice for you. Although if you're primarily doing a lot of database reads and very few writes, judging by these numbers, you do pretty well with the Rocket 4 Plus drives. Dropping the Q depth and threads to one, numbers overall suffer a bit due to the SSD not being able to do multiple things at once. And here you see writes outperform reads. And that's due to the drive's controllers being able to write out data to the cache very efficiently. Meanwhile, the random nature of these 4K reads make it impossible to do any kind of read caching. So the drives struggle to seek around their cells and decode the requested bits. In any case, the Rocket 4 Plus drives show their true talents here. And while they perform within margin of error of each other, they are significantly faster than the other two previous gen drives. It's also important to compare temperature data across all these tests. Each drive hits its peak temperature approaching the conclusion of the 4K Q32 write test. And here looking at the Rocket 4 Plus drives, it's clear that temperature increases with capacity with the four terabyte unit, again, coming dangerously close to throttling at 70 degrees. The Corsair MP600, the only drive that shipped with a heatsink out of our tests, shines because the massive chunk of copper on top of it effectively radiated away its heat. And this shows just exactly why you need cooling when purchasing an NVMe drive, even if it's just the heat spreaders on your motherboard. The Samsung 970 Evo has a higher thermal throttle threshold than the other drives at 79 degrees, but we can clearly see that it was hit in this test. These Samsung drives have a reputation for getting pretty toasty, but the advice is still the same regardless of the drive you get. Make sure you cool it somehow. Moving ahead, the PC Mark 10 storage bench claims to use a wide ranging set of real world traces for popular applications and common tasks. This benchmark places the one terabyte Rocket 4 Plus in first place, followed closely by the four terabyte and the two terabyte, Trailing behind are last year's Corsair MP600 and the Gen 3 970 Evo coming in last. And now for some actual real world tests. This first one is an approximate 100 gigabyte file copy on a drive acting as both the source and destination. The data here is actually the game files for Grand Theft Auto 5. It's a nice mixture of uncompressible media assets, binaries, and scripts. Here, the four terabyte Rocket 4 Plus is the fastest drive in our test 
only marginally faster than the one terabyte drive. And curiously, the two terabyte drive falls behind in this test, getting beaten by both its siblings and the last generation Corsair MP600. The PCIe Gen 3 Samsung 970 Evo predictably falls to the bottom of the pack with its lower throughput and smaller cache, especially since my sample is only a 500 gigabyte drive. We see very similar results in the load time test for Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers. The 4TB Rocket 4 Plus leads the pack with the 2TB curiously falling behind and just barely beating the Samsung 970 Evo, although it's worth noting that all of these are within 1.2 seconds of each other, which is actually a significant percentage when you express the data that way, but it's not a lot of difference in the practicalities of loading a game. I mean, 1.2 seconds, come on. Another game load test now, Grand Theft Auto V sees our first test without the Corsair MP600, but shows the one and two terabyte Rocket 4 Plus drive switching places and the four terabyte version retaining its marginal dominance. Again, there's only about a half second of difference between the slowest and the fastest. And that proves that drive speed only plays a minor role in loading this title. The Windows 10 boot time test is where an identical image of Windows 10 is loaded onto each drive with a driver level piece of software that records the time it loads, followed by the earliest time it's able to access the desktop. Then it takes the difference between those two numbers for an approximate boot time calculation. Now, this is by no means an accurate measure of true boot time, but it is useful to compare the drives against each other. And here we see the one and four terabyte Rocket 4 Pluses coming in a dead tie, followed by the two terabyte and the 970 Evo less than a second behind. So those are the tests. And the question is, should you buy one of these drives? And as always, it depends. The drives themselves are great. They're lightning fast, they're responsive, they've got a five-year warranty when you register, but they're expensive. Instead of asking, should I buy one? You should be asking, do I need one? Now these drives perform best in sequential workloads, so if you've got a particular use case that can take advantage of that, then great, these drives will serve you well. If though you're among the vast majority of people that'll be using these for gaming or content creation or productivity, then the drives will indeed do well for you too, but you gotta ask yourself if you need the marginal performance boost that you're paying a hefty price for. And that's not just for these drives in particular, but for all PCIe Gen 4 drives at this point. When you look at the benchmarks, games and even Windows loads only a second to a second and a half faster on these than on a much less expensive Gen 3 drive. And I'd be asking myself if the extra money spent on Gen 4 might be better put towards a beefier CPU or maybe extra memory or a GPU. And if these SSDs might actually be faster than you need. On the other hand though, if you constantly deal with large data transfers like copying 100 gigabytes at a time, then you're definitely gonna benefit from a PCIe Gen 4 drive and the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus drives are among the fastest you can get right now. In fact, it's faster than a speeding bullet, at least according to its girlfriend. By the way, if you're into crazy storage shenanigans, make sure you subscribe to the channel because coming up, we're gonna have a video taking four of these Rocket 4 Plus drives and putting them into an absolutely insane, crazy, overdone RAID 0 and trying to get the maximum performance possible out of them without generating enough heat to burn down the building. We're also gonna build a huge, like 400-ish terabyte storage server with some interesting power requirements. Also, if some of the stuff that we were talking about in this video is a little over your head, that's okay. We're gonna do an SSD deep dive explaining how a lot of this stuff works under the hood in a way that you'll be able to understand. So give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Otherwise, go ahead and thumbs down and just relish in the fact that you ruined my life. Subscribe, hit the bell, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.